We are at the Berlin Institution and today we are filming lecture two of the Christmas lectures. We are just outside of the theatre where we control the audio and the video and we are about to go inside. So this is where everything happens. This is where we film the Christmas lectures from. So we have a few cameras here that will be controlled later. And that is the set for this year. We have created a kind of food factory for this year's Christmas lectures. The Christmas lectures have been hosted in this theater since 1825 when Faraday started them almost 200 years ago. And today it's about 4 p.m. now. So in about two hours, this theater will be full of young people, 400 young people will come and watch the filming of the Christmas lectures tonight. So my name is Judith, I'm the project manager for the Christmas lectures, I've been doing these for about three years and I basically control everything about the Christmas lectures. I work with uh, the production company, I work with our commissioners, the BBC, and I work with the RI team and the demonstrations team to make it all happen. Okay, so I'm going to show you the demonstration room, we call it the demo room. <laughs> this is where we create all the demos for the Christmas lectures. So right in here is the demo team getting ready for lecture two. Should we have a look? Right, so this is a demo room where we create all the demos for the Christmas lectures. A demo is a kind of experiment or a visual demonstration to explain a scientific concept um, in a way that everyone can understand. And in this room we actually have some props and demos that we've used in the past. You can see over there um, there's demos from previous Christmas lectures, from kind of Hannah Fry, Alice Roberts, all the way down to Sue Black's demos and last year's um, Michael Woolridge demos as well. And even we have some demos that were made for, whoop, for the lecture two days ago, uh, lecture one of this year's Christmas lectures. Creating a demo is quite a long process. It starts with kind of having a think about um, the concepts that we want to talk about, having script meetings and a lot of brainstorm meetings with our lecturer, with the production team, the script writers. And then we start developing prototypes. We start developing um, smaller versions of the demos that we want to show on the night. And all of this process actually started this year at University. Can you can you grab the the, the little pack, please? <laughs> Hello, it's Dan here from the Royal Institution Demo Team. We are getting ready for the 2024 Christmas lectures. Uh, it is about three o'clock in the afternoon, even though it's very dark all the way down here, but it's very chilly. So let's go into where we're working. We're here at the Makerversity at Somerset House, and this is our vault where we're based this year. In you come. So let me give you the quick tour. Uh, up on the wall, this is the main thing. There's all of our demonstrations uh, in rough order, color coded to who's looking after them. Uh, and that's chopping and changing. You can see some have moved to the sides, but that's all of the demos we are currently working on for this year. Um, on this wall, there are some demos that we're getting ready for tomorrow. We have a demo rehearsal uh, where uh, Dr. Chris will be coming here to the Makerversity. And we're gonna go through some of those demos and uh, see if they're all working, ready for filming in just a couple of weeks. Okay, so let's go have a look at the demo wall a bit closer. All of these post-it notes are demonstrations that currently will be in the lectures, but they changes all the way up to the day that we film it. Even sometimes in the edit, that changes. Um, so I'm going to have a quick look at lecture one. 
Um, you know, we're looking at like saliva, so that's really up on the, uh, uh, up in your mouth, that early part of the digestive system. And we're going to follow all down. We go to like how you smell things. Got the epiglottis in your throat. We get down to the stomach. We're going to look at the rest of your guts. There's some stomach rumbling, the intestines, the villi. Um, we're getting down to well, look, we'll leave it farts and poo down there. But we're following the digestive system all the way through in lecture one. Uh, and I want to show you one particular demo. All of mine are on orange post-it notes. So these are the ones I'm looking after. And this is retropulsive peristalsis, and that's the way that your stomach breaks up food. You might know that your stomach is mushing your food up, but Chris really wanted to talk specifically about this ring of muscle that ripples along your stomach, squashing all your food. And to do that, we're going to need some food, and we're going to need a really big stomach. So come over here. So I'm making some food. I have 3D printed. I've got a steak, a nice little RI chocolate bar there, uh, a carrot, comes in two parts a banana, and what might be a slice of tomato, I'm not sure about that one just yet. We're going to take these over to a pressure former, and we're using that pressure former to make jelly moulds of these shapes. So actually, here is my carrot one, there you can see. Uh, I'm going to make some jelly in there, so we'll have a jelly carrot, uh, and then a jelly steak, and a jelly chocolate bar, and a jelly banana, etc. And we're going to take those jelly foods, and we're going to put them into this, a giant stomach. I'm going to drop them in there, and we're going to do what the stomach does, we're going to mush all that food up, that's why I'm using jelly, so it'll be really easy to break. But we're going to have to get this whole stomach through a ring, which will probably be about this big, because there's a pulsing ring of muscle that moves along your stomach, and that's what squashes the food and breaks it all up before it carries on down the tube into your intestines. So we're going to do it on a big scale, lots of jelly, no doubt lots of mesh. Uh, I'm not totally sure that my stomach will stay together, so I uh, have to watch the lectures to know whether or not it bursts open. Um, either way, it's definitely going to be very messy. This is the prototype for the poo machine. It's basically a piece of tube. So what we're going to do with this is basically kind of get the kid, it's going to be strapped on like that. So what's going to happen is inside here, it's going to be a mixture of tissue and water and they're going to actually form the poop. And at the other end, what you should be able to see is the hole. And that poop will be forced out through the hole. So the perfect poop will come out very lovely and the others will either come out a bit too runny or not at all. Now we're here in the digital making space uh, here at Makerversity and we're going to take this 3D printed and uh, filled uh, model of a steak uh, and we're going to take a piece of plastic and we're going to make a jelly mould out of this using this very cool piece of equipment here. So I'm going to turn it on first, it's going to take a little while to warm up. Um, while it does that, we'll do the most satisfying thing which is peeling the protective layer off of here. You see? That piece of plastic, I'm going to close the lid. We're going to start making a vacuum in there. We're going to take our steak. Locking it in. And now we're going to pour it. Keep that pressure on there for about two minutes. So um, this might not look like much, but it's our epiglottis machine. So this will be a game. This will be at the top and we'll send balls down and then the contestant who is playing will have to flip between the stomach and the lungs. And depending on what's coming down, whether it's oxygen or whether it's food, they will be able to control this game a little bit like a pinball machine. Okay, so we're back in the vault. Uh, we've got our plastic mould, soon to hopefully be a jelly mould, but our 3D printed original is still in there and it's really sealed in with all that plastic, so I've got to really struggle and fight to get this out. Anybody who's done like vacuum forming will probably be cursing me because what I haven't done is I haven't made a nice angle here which makes it easy to fall out. It's a little bit of lazy 3D modelling on my part. But now I'm paying the price.
20 minutes later. So this is the Lecturers' Corridor. This is a really special place for me because it's the one space at the RI that is dedicated to the Christmas lectures. This space showcases some of the previous props from other Christmas lectures as well as very nice portraits of, our, of some of our lecturers um, such as Christopher Seaman or Monica Grady, just over here. This is what we call the gallery. This is a space where the series producer, director and executive producers usually sit during the lectures and they watch the footage and edit it in real time. Just there we've got the script supervisor. She checks that everyone is saying the right words. And we also have our technicians and editors just behind me. They're currently recording a quick scene in the grand entrance at the Royal Institution. engines use similar fuels, but food is much more than an energy source for our bodies. It's also our construction material. It makes us who we are. And I'm going to show you how. Behind the scenes at the Christmas Lectures 2024, and um, this is this is Monty. Say hello, Monty. <laughs> this is what happens if you're an intern at the RI. The RI. This is they feed you to the snakes. <laughs> Right, so now you've seen how the Christmas lectures are filmed, but that's not it. So once we get all the footage from lecture three on Saturday, we'll have about two weeks to put everything together and edit it before it gets broadcast on BBC4 at the end of December. But the Christmas lectures are an all-year-round project. We have loads of online activities you can do, we have teacher resources, we have shows going all over the country, and then once we all get back from the Christmas holidays, we'll have to start all over again to plan next year's Christmas lectures. Don't forget to watch the 2024 Christmas lectures The Truth About Food on BBC iPlayer and the RIC YouTube channel. And you can also check out our archive of previous Christmas lectures on our YouTube channel.